me. But check out Fred Warner again on uh, with Kay Adams FanDuel TV. Listen close now. From day one, I've been a Brock Purdy fan, and I always will be. Uh, I think he's one of the best in the league, and soon he will be the best, undisputed, right? But, you know, practice, I'm not even about to talk about no practice. I mean, right. people want to make, make some out of practice with interceptions and all that other stuff. It's, listen, <laughs> you obviously have never been in the NFL if you're out there writing stories about uh, interceptions in practice. But like like Debo mentioned, he's going against one of the best defenses in the league. You know what I'm saying? So, hey, it's, it's all good. We're not worried about that. Okay. I know you were focused on the stop worrying about practice interceptions. I agree with you completely but the other statement by the way is the one that i think is going to start making the rounds on debate tv this weekend and on monday like i'm just telling you right now prediction fred warner's comment is going to be because this is what plays this is what plays in 2024 fred warner said that brock purdy is one of the best quarterbacks in the league and will soon be the best undisputed that's on a t that's on a platter for Stephen A and FS1, it's, it's on a platter. I think he should have that kind of confidence in his man. I, I like that he said that, and I like that he believes it. I mean, did, didn't Brock, like, did, w- didn't he impress Fred Warner the most when he was running the scout teams in Fred, camp? And the, he was like, yeah, they the, were talking smack back and forth. And No, the, yeah, the story was is that Bre- Fred Warner and Trent Williams were having a conversation walking off the field. This is when it was all about Trey Lance and Jimmy on the side field and all that stuff, and they were having a conversation about Brock Purdy. They're like, you see this kid? Dude can play. That Fred Warner and Trent Williams. Like, we're not talking about yeah. – it's not like <laughs> – you know what I mean? It's not like like R- Ronnie Bell was talking to uh, Gross Matos – and was like, ooh, Brock's pretty good. No, f- like Fred Warner and Trent Williams, the two freaking statesmen of the two sides of the ball, are like, oh, my God. I mean, I, I don't think I'm out of line here to say that it's very likely that Fred Warner and Trent Williams are both going to end up having gold jackets. Yeah. And I, that's what they thought before the guy had ever played a game. I, I'm, I'm probably going too deep in the weeds here, but I think Fred Warner is probably sick of talking about is Brock Purdy good or is he not? And th- remember they had to answer that question all last year? Sure. And so for him to go that way is just like th- th- that That was a professional way of ending all of that. But it won't. And I think he believes it. That sounded sincere. Yeah. Do you, and he, do, you, do you believe that that's his ceiling? I don't. I'm not going to. I mean, Fred's forgot more football in that statement than I'll ever know. He's also a teammate, though. Yeah. You know, I mean, you know how the game is played and the the game of of talk, microphone talk. Check I mean, a, he goes up a, against him every day. Check a one, two. And then he plays all the best on Sunday. Yeah. I, I feel like that's a good reference, and he's probably trying to pump up his teammate a little bit there. So maybe it was probably, I don't know. Half pumping him up, half believing what he's saying. I don't. I don't know if Brock's going to be the best. I. I can't sit here and say that right now. I don't know. I think this season's huge for him. Well, it, for he's sure. always got to be the guy with a chip on his shoulder, proving himself every Sunday. I don't think a big contract next year will affect him. But like when you're always the underdog and you always have to prove yourself every single Sunday, that's that's a good thing. I don't want Brock Purdy to ever take a deep breath and think I've arrived. He always has to play with that chip on his shoulder to prove people wrong every Sunday. Is uh, it, Grandy? Maybe you know this. Is, is there are there any other quarterbacks who are coming up? Like in other words, are there what other quarterbacks are going to do the extension thing next off season? Is anybody? Because Tua just got his right. Uh, Lawrence just got his. Herbert and Burrow were both just a year ago. Lamar got taken care of. Um, who else is coming up who might be involved in the conversation next year? And the reason I'm asking is um, outside of something, either injury or like really going sideways with Brock Purdy's year, I'm wondering if there's anything that would stop Brock Purdy from getting the biggest contract in the history of the NFL at least when it's signed. This isn't his draft class. It's one full group of years ahead of him. But Dak Prescott's got a contract thing coming up. Right. Yeah. But Dak. Jordan said, Love. Da, well, Jordan Love just got his. Okay. And he's 55. Jared Goff. Jared Goff just got his. Okay. He got 52. This is a bootleg website. Then. So, well, those both just happened within the last three, three four weeks. You have to check the date. But, um, yeah, some of, the, some of the, like Dak Prescott, it sounds like, 
goes into the final year of his deal this year, and the Cowboys would like that to play out. But that's a that's a fair one. Russell Wilson. $40 million this year for Dak. Russell Wilson's contract is definitely going to go down no matter what he does this year. Yeah, as far as quarterbacks that are going that are going to be making big money, like there's guys that are going on expiring deals but that aren't going to make a ton of money, uh, they are much younger than Brock and still have a couple of years to so go. So it's basically Dak and Brock. I think so. And Dak, the reports say, is asking for 60, and the Cowboys said, go, go show us. And Which they should. Th- absolutely they should. However... Um, Are you a Dak guy? No, but I'm also not a Dak guy. Like, I don't think that he stinks. I don't think that he stinks. I think the game starts moving real fast for him when it's a big game and late. Maybe. Yeah, I like he hasn't been uh, great at his biggest moments, but when the Green Bay Packers come into your building and hot knife through butter for three and a half quarters, I don't blame the quarterback. That's not how I roll. I don't blame the quarterback. Like, your defense was not any good. And your offseason this year has been laughable. The Dallas Cowboys have had the most laughable offseason I think I've ever seen for a team that supposedly is contending for something. They have decided to apparently just ignore the running back room and act like it doesn't exist. They have left C.D. Lamb on an island almost worse than Brandon Ayuk's because C.D. is obvious. Like, hello, that should be the second highest paid receiver in the game. Justin gets 35 Give CD his 33 and let's go. There's no conversation here. They've left him on an island and then had the owner come out to microphones and go, yeah, we don't miss him. Okay, so <laughs> what are you guys doing? They've made no moves this offseason. Really, really odd, odd Good. things going on for the Dallas Cowboys. Screw but, Dallas. But Dak will come out and put up numbers. For sure he will. You know who would not change with a big comment, uh, contract? Is Amon Ross St. Brown. Based on what we were talking about. I agree. He would work harder than he already works well, if you gave just, him a five-year deal. I think that's the way he wakes up in the morning. Yeah, he doesn't know any other He thing. wakes up mad. He wants to kill somebody when he wakes up in the morning. No. I feel like he's, he's serious. He recites the 16 guys right out of bed that were drafted before him. I look at Amon Ra and working out hard, kind of like, um, you know, like a kid that, that grows up in California versus a kid that grows up in Nebraska, like, when you see the ocean, if you grew up in California, you're like, yeah, there's the ocean. If you grew up in Nebraska, you're like, holy crap. There's the, like, what is that? I've never seen that before in my life. Amon Ra, like the gym to him is like the ocean to a California kid. He doesn't know anything else. You wake up and you go to the gym and you spend most of the day there. Like just, I, I think it's habitual with him. So I, he's brought, you saw him receivers. You. He was like ten years old doing bench totally. press, and then he was crying after the like the Pop Warner games when he didn't have a good game. I was like, oh man, this guy's so intense. <laughs> so Do you intense. Think he, I think he has fun playing. Um, I think, well, I think it got fun when he's yeah. I think he does, and it got really fun when he signed that contract. That was fun. Don't you think? I'm a, I'm a I'm a closet Lions fan. Grew up, they, I grew up a Lions fan before I was a Niners fan. Then they got good again, so I'm a front runner Lions fan until they play the 49ers. Yeah, but then the, I'm a 49ers fan. The Lions are like an easy other team to not mind when, if they're not playing the Niners. Well, Jer- Jared, Jared, Bay Area guy, but also known just him since he was a baby. Well, but they're so they're so <laughs> drip. They're so not threatening. They're the Lions. That's why it's easy to like them. They've never broken anybody's heart except for their own fans. Yeah. So, like, you know what I mean? That was a tough NFC championship game to watch because that was my dad's one shot of a Super Bowl as a Lions fan. And then we were, my son and I were with him rooting for the Niners, and then we got done, and we are like, oh, we should probably be quiet. Yeah, right like, now. I didn't feel bad at all, but, like, you do go, oof, that probably, that that must not have been fun. The Lions fans, yeah, you do, uh, in a way, feel bad for them, but so sad. Anyway, um... <laughs> <laughs> 49er David in Concord. Hey, what's up? You're on with an FP. Hey, guys. So help me understand the logic. If Trent Williams doesn't play in this preseason game, which he otherwise wouldn't play in anyways, he's going to leave a million one on the table. Help me understand that. Help you understand that. No, so he's going to get paid that in his contract. So right. that that's going to be irrelevant once he gets the new redone contract. Right. And who cares about a million? Because he's going to get paid a gazillion. 
And I, and, well, not just he's already getting a gazillion. I understand where the caller's coming from because he's like, look, how much of a raise are you going to get that it makes sense for you for the second week in a row to leave one point one million on the table? We, ca- I can't wrap my head around that. Well, I'd a- I'd answer it this way. My guess, I don't know Trent's contract. I'm not his agent. My guess would be that at this point in Trent's career, having already made a one hundred and sixty eight million dollars in his NFL career, my guess would be. He is will whatever their disagreement is, he is willing to sacrifice, let's call it two point two million dollars right now to firm up that another year from now there's a little extra in the pot and it's a little bit guaranteed. Like he's basically saying, I'll give up two point two million to sort of protect myself from something happening to my leg in November this year. Or his ankle. That's that's his that's and that's a bet that he wants to make. And at age thirty six, I don't think anybody really even wants him in camp right now. And then lastly, wait, my cynical side doesn't believe that the Niners won't find a way to just be. I know they're not allowed to waive the fines, but I don't know when he retires to be like, dude, we'll send you two point two million dollar gift. What do you mean nobody really wants him in camp right now? I don't think that they want Trent working out for a month and a half before the regular season starts. He's 36 years old. Now, let, let me say it this way. That's too firm to say they don't want him there. There is very little motivation for Trent to be on the daily grind on August 16th. At don't don't you? Man, you got to put pads on and feel what it's like to get hit again, man. You got to get, don't you? Not if you're Trent. Ooh, I don't know about that. I, I Here's my belief. I'm not saying it's an ideal world. But Trent could sign a new deal an hour before kickoff on September 9th, and he'll be in there. I mean, he'll be in there, but how effective and, will he and be? And I'm not exaggerating. I think he'll be fine. I think he'll be totally Why? fine. Why? Because he is It didn't work for Blake Snell. Correct. So you think he just stands there? I mean, he's got... There's a reason why there's camp. It's not ideal, but it, it would be that way. And whatever it is that he is, you know... Whatever he's working for, it matters to Why him. Why are we giving Trent a pass and not Brandon Ayuk? I don't understand this. Like I want Trent Williams in camp. I want him to. I want him to. I, I want my defense to go up against him. I agree with you. There's value to that. But for, I don't think the situations are similar at all. Is not, he like I don't think that they're similar out? at all. Is it? I'm sure he's working out. I don't I'm know, sure man. he's working out. He's gonna be sucking gas in the third quarter and week on Monday night football in week I, one. I had somebody and guys are just going by him and Brock's getting crushed. I had somebody send me video when Trent was not even gone from Washington yet and he's in a year long holdout. And um it was before the draft. And um the 49ers we didn't know were about to acquire him. And he was at Adrian Peterson's facility, which I think is in Texas, and uh it was video of what he was doing in his workout. And I have never seen anything more physically amazing in my life than watching that 325 pound man and what he can do in terms of raw athleticism. The, 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 the mat jumping that he is able to do, he is, he's beyond. Yeah, but here he's out of control. I'm not arguing with you. I wish he was there but I think that the idea that like that's the same as other players, I just don't agree. There's game shape and there's in, there's sure. in shape. There's two different things. I don't know if it's the same in football, but in baseball, we could run up hills and have parachutes. And I, I report, and I got five percent body fat, and I put on twenty pounds, and I'm in great shape. And the first day, you go out and take forty ground balls, and you take turns on the bases. You're locked up and you're sore. I agree with you. And th- there's a reason why you go to camp. There's a reason why you're part of the team. There's a reason why you're on your teammates to get into game shape. I believe that he will I, be I, in I camp. I don't believe in any sport you just show up to opening day or week one or the first game in the NBA without training with your teammates to get ready for that. I don't disagree with you. I don't think you. he's going to be the same guy if he just shows up to game one. I, I don't. I, okay. Again. I don't care I, what he's doing, Mark. I'm not disagreeing with you. I don't care if he's you. doing all but kinds of cartwheels and he's in great shape. But we're not there yet. It's not the same. But we're not there yet. I, I gave you a hypothetical, and I believe it, that if he signed an hour before the game, he would play. But I'm how not, would he play? I don't know. But we're also not there yet. We're not there yet. This game this weekend, he was not going to play in even if he was here. He's not going to play in the preseason. So... 
if he shows up on Monday, we're good here. Okay. You get three weeks of camp. That's plenty. If he shows up for Monday Night Football and that's his first game, it ain't going to go well. Okay. You might be right. No, I know I'm going to be right. Yeah, well, you but, can't just show up against guys that have been working toward and increasing game speed I, and being hit and having the pads on and out there for hours every single day to get better at their craft when you're doing jump ropes. The only way I it can answer that, that the way. only way I can answer that is that I don't think that it's going to happen that Good. way. All right. Then I'll I don't, stop. I do I'm not more worried it. about him than Brandon Ayuk. You're, you're like and if, nobody else is talking about. If, it. if if you think I'm I'm not disagreeing with you, I'm giving you a hypothetical. I'm not saying it's ideal and okay if Trent just shows up on Monday, September 9th. I'm simply saying that it's he'd still play even if it goes that way. If you had to rank Niners players, obviously the quarterback position in the NFL is the most important. Mm -hmm. I would put Brock number one. But where would you put Trent Williams in the top five or six? On the Niners? Yeah. Oh, God, way way higher than top five would or six. Would you put him two? Maybe. Probably. Like, it's, it's a race between... I think there's only five people to me that are potentially even on the list. And with all apologies to Debo and Brandon, I, I, they don't make my top five. It, it On defense, it's Fred and Nick. And on offense, it's Trent, Brock, and Christian. Boy, when Debo was out last year, they struggled. Big deal. They struggled. Well, and when he a, came back, they rolled. They've got a, Right, but you forget that that was also Trent. Trent missed those games too and then came back, and then they rolled. So rank your top five. I just gave them to you. Oh, you want him in order? Yeah, in order. Okay, Brock's number one. Plus, and I, know I wasn't paying attention. Br Brock, Brock. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting late, man. Brock, it's Friday. Brock uh, is number one, and I know that bothers some people. No, he's number one. But he's the quarterback. Quarterback's got to be number the, one. The fall off from the QB1 to QB2 is intense. Um, if I had to go number two, I, I go think Trent. I'd go Trent. I go Trent. I go two. Trent. If I had to go number three, Bosa. Uh, I would actually go Fred, and then I would go Bosa. I can't argue with and that. And then I would go Christian. Yep. And I know that a lot of you think that that's crazy that Christian's so low, but I think the Niners could win all kinds of freaking games with Jordan Mason as their running back. No, McCaffrey changed everything yes, when he, he got does. traded you here, man. Bob, you didn't hear what I said. Now, come on. I didn't say that. The, I put him number five. He's huge. But it, you're asking, can you go out and win a game? You could put McCaffrey two on your list, and I'd be like, okay, yeah, I hear you. I could go uh, be fine with that. There's not. Listen, Christian is so special, but there's not a coach in America that would tell you that a running back is more important than an edge rusher. No, like th nobody. I'm changing mine. There's a reason Nick Bosa makes twice as much as Christian McCaffrey. I'm going McCaffrey, too, on mine. That's fine. I'm not going to argue with you. And then I'm going Bosa, and then Trent Williams, and then Fred Warner. And we didn't even bring up, like I know you mentioned Debo. We didn't even bring up Kittle. Debo's, are, Debo's there. Kittle's Kittle. huge. These are huge, important players. What a good problem to have. Seriously. <laughs> to do your top five That's on a team. That's what I'm and sitting here like, saying. Whoa. This team is so good.